We started, have we? <laughs> I yeah, think <laughs> I think that Bryson Shambo is going to win the U.S. Open. Here we go. What are Mate, you saying? Maybe? Well, there's absolutely no chance of that. I don't know if you've heard of Mr. Scotty Scheffler, but he will be the winner this week. Let's see. Let's see. Welcome to the No Ifs, Puts and Bogies podcast. We are a no-nonsense, straight-talking golf podcast discussing all the hot topics in the world of golf. This podcast is brought to you in association with Barreto Golf, a stylish, affordable golf clothing brand. Visit barretogolf.com for the latest offers. That's B-A-R-R-E-T-O golf.com for all the latest offers. This podcast is also brought to you on behalf of the Golfer Gang Network. Please do go check out some of the other golfer podcasts. And without further ado, I will pass you on to your host, Mr. Harry we are back baby we are Just back about. episode Just 10 about. yeah two weeks yeah great intro lads well done um <laughs> if that didn't get everyone in i don't know what will yeah, know episode what. 10 baby what a milestone <laughs> yeah who'd have thought eh? we're, still who'd have thought? Tele- we're still in uh holiday mode a little bit i think but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, well, let's well, catch up on that. We've been away for two weeks. Let's inform the viewers what we've been up to. DB, why don't you kick off? Well, uh, for those of you who will know me, will know exactly where I've been. For those of you who don't, you could probably have a good guess just from listening to this podcast. I managed to get myself back to Sin City, Nevada, Viva Las Vegas <laughs> uh, for a stag do. No golf this time, but that was almost definitely for the best because whole thing was just a blur, quite frankly. So yeah, I'll leave it there. I think. Yeah. Great time. Great time. time. Nice. And AB, you've been doing the exact same of you. Yeah. A little bit different. Um, I've just been on a a nice family holiday um, to Morocco. So just a little all inclusive jobby. Yeah. So didn't really move much from the pool side. Um, ate a lot, drank a lot, and was on the sunbed. I don't know if you can still see. I've got absolutely horrendous sunglasses tan. Um, it's gone. It's gone down a little bit. I, people, I went to the. I was in London on Saturday at the rugby, and uh, people thought I was ill because <laughs> of my because uh, of my tan around my eyes. But um, yeah, we're all good. Ready to get back into the swing of the pod. Um, you managed to get to any uh, any golf in on the holiday? No, no. Went past a couple of nice places. Um, I think my hotel was actually quite close to one of the better courses in Agadir. But um, yeah, just was literally lounging around the pool for a week. So, and I haven't, yeah, I've not played for a fortnight because I couldn't play on Saturday either. So yeah, I'm very, very out of shape and... Uh, I think the the round I had before I went on holiday, I hit 110. So, oh god, we're we're all over the shop at the moment on the golf front. But um, looking forward to getting out this weekend. Guy actually had an all right round on the weekend again. Uh, another top ten finish for DB. Um, we're looking all right in the order of merit, chaps, for the uh, big fucking statement. We're looking all right. In the what we call the race of the 19th, <laughs> the order of merit. I've had uh, three top 10 finishes, including one win. I don't know if anyone knew, but I did win a tournament earlier on in the year. Uh, so sure, sixth sure. for DB on the weekend, which uh, we'll take. Fell apart a little bit on the back. There was a couple of new tee boxes. We've had some works done on the course. So they're a little bit longer than usual. Um, and stay tuned on the main Barreto Golf Instagram feed because one of the best shots I may have ever played in my life will be getting posted this week. So I will leave it there. I've built that up (laughs) way more than what it needed to be built up. (laughs) For those of you good golfers, you probably won't think it's that good. But for me, I was delighted. But Clarky, just before we get started, obviously we were talking about some exotic countries quick roundup we have hit our 12th country 
we've managed to pick up some stragglers in Indonesia. So, <laughs> just a quick shout out. If you are in the UK, United States, Canada, Germany, Austria, Australia, Indonesia, Ireland, Spain, Netherlands, Sweden, and Singapore, thank you for listening. We love you. And if you want to get in touch, you know where we are. That must be someone we know on holiday, surely. There can't be someone randomly. Well, no, so I think, I don't know how this works. We'll have to speak to our publishing company. I don't know if anyone knew, but we are part of the Golfer Gang Network. Do have a listen to some of the other podcasts. Um, but we, I think it does it on your iPhone like ID, right? So if you've got an English phone, it doesn't matter where you are. You count as a UK download. I'm pretty sure. Right, okay. Sure. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, 12 countries and one of them being Indonesia. Um, yeah. yeah, great. <laughs> love love to hear it. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's let's start talking golf and enough about yeah. our lack yeah, of geographical knowledge. <laughs> um, there's, been some, there's been some big stories since we've been away. Um, let's kick off with Scotty winning another one. Uh, Ibi, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, mate. So... Obviously, I, I haven't actually watched any of it, but I was following on the uh, on, online on my phone and uh, on the socials. And shock horror, Scotty Scheffler has won his fifth event of the year, um, winning at the Memorial Tournament. Um, so again, another flagship event of the PGA Tour. Um, I don't know, DB, if you watched any of it, but. I mean, it's, it's no, it comes as no surprise to find that Scotty has won another tournament. Um, I think he was pretty much thereabouts the whole weekend, right? And uh, I know that um, <clears throat> a couple of guys got close. Colin got close. Adam Hadwin was up there for most of the weekend. Um, but I think on the on the Sunday, a lot of the a lot of people shot over par. But I think um, Scotty had a big enough lead that. Um, he still managed to get the win, so he's coming into the US Open fresh off yet another victory. Yeah, saw so just um, some funny content that I saw. So this would have been on mm, Sunday, maybe, maybe Saturday. Uh, Flushing it golf. We will shout them out. A, one of AB's favourite accounts, actually. Um, Scotty Scheffler is so much better than everyone else that he started with a three-shot lead today made a triple and three putted the last and has still extended his lead to four shots. So <laughs> I think that was on Saturday. I think that was on Saturday. So I'm just going to read that again. So he started the day with a three shot lead. He made a triple bogey. He three putted the last hole and he still extended his lead to four shots. So he still was a shot better than everyone else after dropping three on one hole and three putting the last. That's mad. Yeah. Funny times. Fair play, Scott. I've seen um, he played a shot off one foot as well. I don't know if anyone's seen that on Instagram. He literally, like, he literally swung, um, swung through the ball and, like, I can't even explain it. He like kicks like thin air as he was coming through, trying to like. Yeah, yeah. I, I have now, now you've described it like that. I have seen a clip of that. Um, and I saw I saw one where he hit a drive um, and he let go of his driver and yeah. started four, which was also, you know, very relatable to the high handicapper. Um, but I just, I can't believe he's having an all-time season. Um, I don't think, I don't, I, believe it or not, I haven't got any stats at hand regarding how many wins per year, but I think he must be touching sort of Tiger territory at the moment in terms of five wins we're only halfway through the year. Um, you know, he's favourite every week. So he's, I think Tiger probably had nine or 10 wins in the year. Um, I, I think, know that uh, one of you guys also shared um, an image with like, uh, it was hit, uh, Scotty and I think it was Xander in the background. And it's like Xander has won 11 million this year. And Scotty's won 24 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I've got like, Scotty turning into that, isn't it? Yeah, I've got his earnings here. So he's won 24000 dollars $24, which is mental. And his caddy's taken home 2.2 mil. 
And that's yeah, from sure. this is from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen events it's got listed on here. And he's won five of them. He's doing yeah, right. and I mean he's he's gonna be he's he's thereabouts every week, really, isn't he? Like yeah. you know. Another it's, winner, it's, it's, um Mr. McIntyre. Yeah. Um he won the what was it again? Yeah, he the won Canadian the week Open? before the RBC Canadian Open, yeah. Yeah. His first, so that's his first PGA Tour win. Um, obviously, Bobby is Scottish, so we like him a lot. Part of the European Cup setup, uh, Ryder Cup setup. Sorry for the European team. And um, yeah, that one again. I was on holiday, but I followed it on my phone. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing for him because he he's come close a few times. Uh, um, more so on the on the DP World Tour than on the PGA, but you know, it's a massive tournament to win the Canadian open, you know, Rory's won it quite a few times. There's usually a really strong field. And so for him to have got over the line and again, it was quite close towards the end. I think there was a few up there. A few of the Canadian boys were up there trying to win. I think Mackenzie Hughes local, it was his home course actually. And he was up near the top as well. And uh, for Bobby to sort of hold him off and then get the win there, the funny thing about that was is um, he, he he didn't really fancy it going into the tournament and he brought his dad out from Scotland and put him on the bag and uh, then he's gone and won the bloody tournament. It was actually like a real like nice touching moment. So uh, his dad's like a greenskeeper or groundsman or something or other at some club in Scotland where they grew up. And essentially, although he's not like a professional, like a teaching professional, he sort of taught Robert McIntyre how to play golf. And it was like very emotional scenes at the end. Obviously, it was his first win on the PGA Tour. He's not had loads of wins under his belt in general. Um, and I believe it's someone who's come right the way through the ranks of like all golf. There was no like automatic qualifications onto the PGA Tour or anything. He really cut his graft on the Challenge Tour and then the European Tour. Then onto the PGA Tour. It's the first, I think it's like the first full full season he's had like dual registration he had like entry into some of the other pga tour events from his dp world tour before but this is the furthest he's been on the dp on the pga tour so yeah real he was there was a lot of tears i don't think there was a dry eye in the house and what i've got to say is in true credit to the character of the man that he is he actually qualified for the memorial this weekend which is like a 20 million dollar purse or something one of the bigger ones I think Scotty got like four million for winning, and like there's yeah. a good lot of money up for grabs. And he literally said on camera, basically, not a fucking chance I'm playing that. I'm going <laughs> home on the smash, basically. Yeah. And he flew home with his dad, and he's been on the piss in Scotland for a few days. And I just think, what a legend. Like, that's the sort of, that's what that's what it's all about, isn't it? Like that I is exactly like, what it's all about. Like Absolutely. Five million dollars or whatever it was. It's just like fuck it. Yeah, who cares anymore? He's done it. Like, go, go, enjoy it. Absolutely, nice. fair play to him. I didn't know that. That's that's amazing. Yes, yeah, so he he wasn't qualified for this week. He but by winning last week, he qualified, and he elected to not play. Amazing. <laughs> go home with yeah, his I dad, that. I believe. Love that. That's a nice one. Uh, and then the final winner we should talk about is it's not PJ related, so keep your booze to a minimum. It is live. Um, Carlos Ortiz, um, he he's won recently. He actually finished with um, 15 under. Uh, AB, what do you think about his win? Yeah, I mean, I don't know too much about this one either, to be honest. But I know that um, we're trying not to necessarily be too much of a PGA mouthpiece. Um, so, yeah, he's he won the most recent live event. So, um, I guess it's a... I think it's a new name, new new name for the winning circle in in the live circuit. So fair play to him. Um, I obviously wish he was still on the PGA Tour. He was a good young up and coming uh, pro. But um, yeah, fair play to him. He's got a win. Um, and yeah, I guess the point of why we've included that, I suppose, is just to you know show that the range of players that are winning across all the different tours. I think golf, like whichever tour you're on at the moment, is just super competitive. And there's, you know, 
hundreds of blokes turning up every week at various tournaments on various tours. And, you know, other than Scotty sort of dominating the PGA, you know, most other events and other tours are, are getting a mixture of winners, which is um, really good for the game. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, yeah. Right, let's move on to, to why, we, why, why we are here today. And that is sure. to discuss the US Open um, at Pinehurst this year. And that takes us to a memorial service sort of around Payne Stewart. Um, he's obviously the winner from 25 years ago. Um, AB, I know you wanted to, to kind of touch on this one. I know you've got a few stats in AB corner this week. Yeah, yeah, I've got a little bit of a sort of a biography of uh, Mr. Payne Stewart. So, um, yeah, I guess it's going to be significant and and he's going to get a lot of uh, coverage on this week um, if you're watching on Sky and and things like that or whatever broadcast is in your country for the US Open. But the reason being is, so as you mentioned, Clarkie, the, the US Open is at Pinehurst this week. So this is the fourth time it's been held at Pinehurst. Um, And basically in 1999, so 25 years ago, um, it was when it was first held there. And Payne Stewart ended up winning. So he basically um, was thereabouts for the whole tournament. And then on the final day, was paired with Phil Mickelson. And they were kind of going to and fro for the whole 18 holes. And then... um, Basically, I think around 16th or 17th, he managed to get himself a one-shot lead. And um, on the 18th, he holed a monster 15-foot putt and finished the tournament on one under par, meaning he won by one stroke. Um, That was actually his second US Open. So he he had won the US Open previously. Um, It was his third major overall because he's also won the the PGA Championship um, before that as well. Um, And effectively, the reason it's significant um obviously it was the first one at this venue but um four months after he won so the reigning us open champion um tragically he died in a plane crash um flying from a golf tournament back to his home in i think orlando in florida and uh yeah sadly uh the plane had had a fault i think and and crashed and uh he didn't survive so um He's going to get a lot of coverage this week. So he, he's he got actually got a statue at Pinehurst um, as a memorial to him. Um, and yeah, I guess in terms of that's obviously a tragic story and a tragic ending to him. But as a golfer, he is, or in, his, in the time he played, the sort of 10, 12 years he was on tour, he was probably the best American golfer for that whole period. Um, so just to put it into context, that US Open that he won at Pinehurst 25 years ago, he, he beat Mickelson. So Mickelson comes second. Um, and then in, in third, tied third even, was Tiger Woods and VJ Singh. So, you know, he's beating some big names there. And um, yeah, at the time of his death, he was third on the all-time money list. and he had been in the top 10 of the world rankings for around about 250 weeks f- during that period. So I think he, he turned pro in sort of 1986. And then obviously he played on the PGA tour throughout that period of time until 1999. And he was, yeah, in the t- inside that top 10 for around 250 weeks, which actually late eighties, early nineties, mid nineties was dominated by European and international golfers. So a lot of that time he was, you know, the significant American golfer for that period. So, yeah, he's going to get a decent amount of coverage this week. It's good to sort of remember him. He inspired quite a lot of people after him. I know DB probably mentioned about um, one of his favourite golfers being inspired by by Payne. But, um, yeah, yeah. I think it's um, it's he's an unbelievable character, and it's worth remembering him this week. And uh, yeah, I think um, it's a it's a really interesting uh, story about uh, and his career, really. 
Yeah, just on that, um, I was just looking at some stats, like on how good of a golfer he actually was in a, a fairly short-ish period of time. He had 18 top 10s in majors, 30 top 25s, and he had 11 wins on tour, uh, on the PGA Tour, as well as a, a few wins on the European Tour, a couple of the wins on the European Tour. He was knocking out, uh, sorry, one of the wins on the, like the PGA Tour, you know, he's beating people like Nick Faldo, um, come second in a couple, like he's yeah. beating like some serious golfers that were knocking around, you know, like proper, proper golf. So yeah, good summary from you there, AB. And just on that, the one that you spoke about with Phil Mickelson, yeah. where he finished one under, um, it's a bit of a testament to the US Open because in general, I think it would be a fair comment to say that the US Open is generally the hardest major to win. And what I mean by that is there's generally quite a lot of scores that are not like 15 under, 10 under. A lot of guys are winning on like around evens, minus one, minus two. People have won on plus one before. So like you've had like Brooks Kepka one on plus one, Justin Rose one on plus one, uh, Webb Simpson one on plus one. So... There's there's a few guys that are winning on like over par um, and around about evens and just under is a testament to how tough they make this course. Seen a few interviews this week where I actually think friend of the podcast, Wyndham Clark, was talking about the greens, basically said they're already sort of borderline. Like if they get any quicker and any harder and any sharper, then... Um, they're in a right pickle, basically. <laughs> he was just, he, he, he looked quite stressed out in his press conference, which is a little bit unusual. He, he didn't look too happy about the speed of the greens and how sharp they were. So I think we will probably have an interesting week ahead. I've seen some clips on Instagram of the rough, and I've seen a few videos of people warming up and playing some shots from some interesting places, shall we say. So it should be a good four days viewing, I think. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, and hopefully it's nice and tight at the top and someone doesn't just run away with it um, and they can all kind of, you know, stick together up there. Um, yeah. One person who, well, two people actually, who've just managed to get to the US Open, uh, Sergio Garcia and Adam Scott, thrown a bit of a lifeline yeah. to get to get back into this, no? Well, we love a bit of news on Adam Scott because he had a ridiculous amount of major appearances consecutively. I want to say like 90 something AB, is that right? Yeah, so he's had, I think this will be his 93rd. I think he was on 92 and now he's got the invite. So it's basically every major for the last 23 years. Which is mental, really. <laughs> Unbelievable. Not Because that's, you know, it, first of all, you have to qualify or get an invite obviously as he's done this week but qualify first and foremost and then also never be injured and it, for him to have been at every single one for 23 years it's almost a shame that he's only won one um he's, he's only won the masters out of all of those times he's yeah. been there um i know that he did mess up he, he was going to win the open championship and then he messed up and uh i think ernie ells pipped him but yeah, incredible longevity. And I'm glad that, you know, when, when someone has a run like that, that someone sees like the common sense and just goes, we want this guy to be there sort of thing. Like, well, he got an invite, right? He didn't qualify. Or did I he qualify? He invite, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, go on. No, that was that was my point. I mean, it, um, you know, it's common sense, isn't it? To just go, we want this guy to be here. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I was just, just looking him up, just doing a bit of research on the spot here. He was, he's 43 now. So from the age of 20, if it's 23 years, he's played in every major golf tournament, which is fucked really when you think about it. Yeah. And yeah, you never know, mate. Road. He could win. You, you never know. If you're in the, if you're in there on a Thursday, you got a chance, you know? Yeah. And obviously Sergio qualified, um, probably dropped out of his automatic qualifications from any tournaments that he's previously won from being on live. Um, so yeah, they've obviously given him the nod. I think probably he's a little bit lucky actually in the grand scheme of things, but um, yeah, we'll see what he can do. He's another one. He's obviously a major winner. He's won it before. Look, he's one of the best European golfers ever. So 
Yeah, I reckon he's got similar numbers, to be fair, because they both started at the same similar sort of time, late 90s. So but just, he's probably, just hold on. He's probably... I, want to go, I want to go back to that a minute. He's This will be his 93rd um, Con- tournament. Consecutive right? major. Consecutive yeah. major, yeah. So Actually, four major. years. Yeah. And he's only won yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a definition of making up the numbers this time then, no? <laughs> They've sent him an invite in your, in your camp, pal. Not Do you know sure. what? Whilst we're, whilst we're talking about making up the numbers... I was listening to another friend of the podcast, Rick Shields, his podcast last week or the week before. And someone asked a question, which wasn't quite as good as my question, but they did discuss it. And it was basically whether when you win a major or so when you win like the US Open or the Masters or whatever, the Masters give you lifetime membership. You can enter all you want. I can't remember who they were discussing, but someone at the PGA Championships, the caddy, had basically had a wedding on the Saturday or something, and they knew mate, he wasn't going to make the cut. Oh, fuck, it's doing my sweet. I can't remember who it was, but he basically invited someone to caddy for him, knowing that he wasn't going to make the cut. And it, they were someone was raising the question: was you know, if you don't make the cut for like ten consecutive years or something, should you still be allowed to have your invite if you've only won? Someone that only won a major once. Who is that? It's someone who's like never well, done anything. That could be loads of people. No, it's someone that never done anything but won the PGA Championship like once. Well, I mean, I could reel off a few names, but why don't why don't we ask the listeners see if they can find it? Yeah. yeah. Off of that really really descriptive details that you've put together there, DB, of someone who's won a major once. I've got a feeling. There we go. I've got a feeling it was uh, they're talking about Beamer, <laughs> right? Rich <I> Beamer. Think... <clears throat> well, that's what I, that was going to be one of my suggestions, but I think that's who they were talking about. So basically, <clears throat> I, can't, I can't remember what the scenario was because yeah, I listened so to the podcast like let's, three weeks let's move on. But well, we'll get. I've got it. I've got I've started, so I'll finish. But basically, <laughs> his caddy or something had plans on the weekend, and they he turned up, and they were just basically just discussing. Should people be allowed to turn up knowing they ain't going to make the cut, basically? So, yeah, if anyone's got any thoughts on that about, you know, if you're a past champion, should you just be allowed to play? Or is there some sort of restrictions that should be put in place? If you don't make a cut 10 years in a row, someone said, you should be binned off because you're just taking up a qualifier's spot, perhaps. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right, let's move on. <laughs> AB, we're going to come to you now because... You are obviously a big Scotty fan, and let's see yeah. your thoughts on whether he can do it again um, at the US Open this time. Yeah, well, um, first of all, I do have a stat. Um, no, Tiger Woods, basically, the long and short of it is Tiger Woods is the only reigning world number one to win the US Open. So... The number one ranked golfer basically never wins the US Open. So that could change again this week. Um, I think we, we in one of our previous pods, I think the Masters debrief, we, we did our predictions for the rest of the year. And on that pod, I said that Scotty was going to win the US Open. So I can't really change my views, given that he's won two or three events since the Masters, um, which he also won. So... He's, you know, by far and away the best player on the planet at the moment. I can't look much further past him. If anybody else wins, it'll be a shock, if you ask me. So, um, yeah, I think it's easy for me to say and it's boring for me to say, but I don't really care. He's going to win and that is, there's nothing really anybody else can do about it, to be honest. I don't think. Wow. I ain't so sure, AB. Because I like the US Open, and I think you know why I like the US Open, and it's because my guy Bryson has won the US Open before. And he broke a couple records when he'd done that. And I, I think, I haven't got the stat off the top of my head, but I think he was the the champion with the most missed fairways. <laughs> to win yeah, I think, I think you could be right there. There is something to do with that, like because that was his tactic for the whole week was... Yeah. 
it was it was after the the post COVID COVID bulk, um, yeah. and he come out like a fucking unit and just distance over accuracy it everywhere didn't care yeah. where it went and won it was actually like quite exceptional viewing to be quite honest um so i said on the masters podcast that he would be my tip for the us open and quite frankly his game in the majors this year is trending up so yeah, i'd agree with that as you will know uh, if you listen to our previous podcast or one of the previous ones, he's the first golfer ever in history to shoot 20 under uh, and not win. And just on that note, uh, a little shout out to Harry, who'd done a good reel for us on Instagram because it actually drew the attention of friend of the podcast, Mr. Bryson DeChambeau, who was giving the post a like and liking our story. So we um, we may or may not be exchanging some DMs with Bryson now. Stay tuned. And uh, yeah, we will let you know on the how, the, how that yeah. develops. Yeah, he'll definitely be invited on the next pod. Uh, <laughs> it's just whether, yeah. whether he wants to come uh, on. As the not. US Open champion, yeah. We're waiting for him to win the US Open first. It'll be a, uh, an exclusive for us. We obviously normally give a few other names, people who could possibly win or, or be there, there or thereabouts. Who else do you think could be could be up there. Right. So we're going to go short, medium and long, aren't we, AB? Right. So my, my yeah. short, um, in inverted commas, is Bryson. Uh, I say in inverted commas because he's actually, I think, 16 to 1. But that does make him the fourth or fifth favourite, I think. Um, my mid-ranger um, is someone who I've also spoken about in a previous podcast. People will get to know as we go along that I've got my favourites and yeah, I like to yeah. stick. DB tips the same people every time. Not true, but I did select this guy to be one of my playing partners in the doubles. So my mid-ranger will be Max Homer. Um, I think he's sort of one of the bigger players now to have not won a major over the last couple of years. He's been a really good, solid performer on a PGA Tour. He's been up there in a few of the majors. And I think... Um, you know, we saw Xander get over the line in the last one and he was someone that needed to get over the line in a major. And I sort of feel like maybe this time we could see the same. I don't know if we'll see a past major winner win again. I think we could see a, um, not a debutant, but a, a sort of someone who hasn't won a major win before. So we saw that last time at the US Open with Wyndham Clark. Um, and I think we will potentially see that again with Maxi. So he's my mid sort of tip he's 45 to one at the moment nice a b a b yeah did you not do your long shot well you do your mid one first right okay then fine. we'll go so, yeah so i've obviously said scotty which is going to be a very short price favorite so there's not really any value there but a short he's price winner is better than a long price loser so he's that's three to one pre-tournament my advice for the day um and then to be honest I haven't really got a mid ranger either. I've gone for um, Colin Morankawa basically because I think he's in very good nick at the moment. He's been thereabouts in the last few big events without actually getting over the line. But I think this week he will potentially go well again and be up there. So, yeah, 14 to 1. Not really, again, much of a tip, but there we are. I think. Uh, I think he's going to go well this week. And then my outsider <clears throat> based purely, and this is a real-time decision. I'm doing it right now because I couldn't really make up my mind earlier. But based purely on how he did in the PGA Championship and the fact that he is a past winner, I think my outsider is going to be Mr. Justin Rose at 125 to 1. I think that might be worth a few quid. Just if he's in good form in the majors, he might go well again this week. He has won the US Open before. And uh, yeah, he surprised me a lot actually in the PGA Championship because that form's kind of come out of nowhere. So yeah, I just having a scroll through there and he looks like he's a nice price. So might as well have a few quid on it. Well, I've got a real rogue one here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> My long shot. So strap yourselves in for this one because there's a bit of a story. 
Because I think, officially, this fellow doesn't even have a PGA Tour card currently. But I think he's done something on the Corn Ferry Tour, like won like three in a row or something. Which he's definitely is... what yeah he, he, so i know what you're going to say but he's definitely won two in a row two in a row yeah to get yeah. him qualified for this somehow from the corn ferry tour i think but cast your mind back ab to 2021 pga championships yeah before we had a podcast but i still fancied myself as somewhat of a golf tipster I put a bet on someone at 500 to 1, and I put £10 each way. And this person happened to finish tied fourth in the PGA Championships in 2021. And therefore, I got paid out a fifth of the odds at £10. So you do the math on that one, Clarky. That's 100 to 1 with a tenner on. So I won £1,000 from a one and only Mr. Harry Higgs. And I am going to be tipping him again because it's the first major he's played in since the PGA Championship in 2022. Genuinely unsure how he's found himself back here other than getting his couple of wins in the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, but he he can turn up and he can play golf and he loves a beer. He, he loves getting amongst it. He's a good all-round bloke. He's 400 to 1 at the moment. So if you're a punter, like what I am, get involved. Get involved and get along and back our boy Harry because he can do it. And he's got a great name. Cracking name. Cracking name. Cracking name. Cracking name. So that's my outside bet for for this one. But a proper, a proper outside bet. 400 to 1. Nice. Nice. Well, there you have it, everyone listening. Um, thank you very much for making it through a lovely podcast. Um, we're really looking forward to um, getting back on and producing some more. Um, if you've made it this far, as always, make sure you give it a like, five stars, follow us on our social channels. We're on Instagram and we will catch you in the next one. Bye. Well done, boys. Well done, chaps. Higgsy's not a bad child to be I think he'll do it. I really do. I've got it. I've got it all. <laughs> <laughs>